Hello everyone and welcome to the second chapter in the top 20 methods to draw the figure with George Bridgman. Now I want to start off by answering a question. Why is George Bridgman technique seem a bit hard to follow? Now there are three reasons for it in my opinion. One, his illustrations look a bit complex and hard to follow. The reason behind it that his drawings in the books about the figure are taken from the drawings he did in class. And he did his class drawings using a long extension stick with a charcoal at the end like we see in these photos. Now of course the photos here are for Henry Matisse, not Bridgman, but uh, it's the same tone. So if you look back now at Bridgman's work, you see it's really impressive to do all this from this far away. But the side effect of course is the illustration is a bit hard to follow for beginners. You need a lot of time practicing his method to get inside his mind and know what he was doing. If you look at his anatomy books on the other hand, you will see much clearer illustration. Now he did this illustration for the anatomy books especially for the book and of course a normal position. That's why it's crisper and clearer. The second reason in my opinion, he doesn't follow one technique or a mannequin like Loomis. Instead he uses a bunch of drawing concepts to reach his goal. These concepts need to be practiced for a while till you get the hang of it. So there is no easy fix or shortcut to reach the end goal right away like we did with Andrew Loomis. Now the third reason I'm gonna delay for now. I'm gonna make a video after the first five methods comparing them together. Saying which is the easiest to follow, which is the hardest and why. So I'm gonna talk about this point in the video. Now of course at the end of the series, at the end of the 20 methods, I'm gonna make a comparison sheet between all 20 methods, explaining which is the best for imagination, which is the best for memory drawings, which is the best for reference drawings, which I use the most, which is faster and so on. So look forward for that video at the end of the series. Okay, with that said, let's take a deep breath and start exploring the mind of George Bridgman. I'm gonna start this chapter like I did with Loomis, explaining the proportions. Now Bridgman proportions for the human body is different. When Loomis's method put the different body at 8 heads high, Bridgman puts his at 7.5 heads, while the width of the body is 2.5 heads, half a head and a quarter from each side. His measurements is not only based on landmarks, like uh, in Loomis's, but also the bone structure as well. For example, the first five lines are the top of the head, the chin, the nipples, the navel, and the crouch, just like Loomis. And the last two are the ankles and the feet. And here is where his measurements go deeper. He divides each head into two parts, and the middle line between them will point to the start and the end of a certain bone. For example, the first half of the head part are where the eyes are, the middle of the head of course. On the half mark distance between the chin and the nipples is where the humerus bone of the arm starts. The humerus bone is one head and a half long and it stops at the wrist where the crotch is. The elbow is aligned with the navel and the distance from the elbow to the wrist which is the height of the radius bone in the lower arm is one head. Between the navel and the crotch, at halfway mark is the start of the femur bone of the leg, the thigh bone, and it's two heads long, and it stops at halfway between the sixth division line and the seventh division line, where the knee is. So the line is at the bottom of the knee. The tibia is one head and a half long, starts from the knee line all the way to the ankles line. The last half head is the height of the feet, from the ankles to the bottom of the feet. And here where it gets a bit weird. Bridgman's proportion for the female is exactly the same for the male, but a bit shorter in overall height. There is no difference between the nipples area, between the nipples line or the navel line. As I mentioned in the introduction, Bridgman does not have a mannequin to follow, but drawing concepts that he applies while drawing the figure. So these concepts come from his book The Complete Guide to Drawing from Life where I try to simplify them in a visual drawing while applying them one by one. I will talk about that in the method explanation chapter. As for now, let's see what does Bridgman think while he is drawing the figure by explaining the 8 concepts he used while drawing. The 8 concepts are the movable masses, wedging, passing and locking, balance, rhythm, turning and twisting, anatomy, 
distribution of the masses, light and shadow, or molding. Now let's talk about each concept by itself, starting with the movable masses. Bridgman simplified the shape of the body to three main masses, or boxes, the head, the rib cage, and the pelvis. Attached to these big masses are the muscles and the bone of the limbs. So when we move in any direction, we move these main three boxes and the rest of the body will follow. So when you start any drawing in his method, you have to keep in mind the position of these three masses before you even start drawing anything else. This is the closest thing you're gonna get to the mannequin with the bridgement method. Now the head box is 8 inches high, 7.5 deep and 6 inches wide. The rib cage is 12 inches high, 8 inches deep and 10 inches wide. The pelvis is 8 inches high, 6 inches deep and 10 inches wide. The second concept is wedging, passing and locking. This concept is the main characteristic of Bridgman's method. He based everything else on this concept of interlocking the masses. Now what he means by that is when we move those three main masses, the head, the ribcage and the pelvis, either by twisting or turning or moving them, the muscles attached to them either expand, shorten or bulge, making smaller wedges in between. Or the muscles pass above each other, under each other or around each other. By doing that, they give the sense of interlocking on each other, like a chain, and that will control the outline of the body. As you can see here from his drawing, the interlocking of the muscles around the three main masses will control how the body's outline will look like. I made this heat map look alike to show the importance of the three main masses in red colors, and where they move, the rest of the body move along with them accordingly, while keeping the interlocking feature while twisting and moving. So when you move the red parts, the main important ones, the rest of the body follow according to its place and distance from these masses. So the closest you are to these big masses, the slower you're gonna move, the shorter your, uh, your movement will be. The further away, the higher, the faster, and the more extreme motion you will have. For example, moving your hip will move your thigh a little bit, but it will move your feet much wider and higher than the thigh. Now an example for wedging, passing and locking is when the deltoid, the pecs and the biceps pass above and under each other. By doing that they create a wedge in between, giving the impression of locking into each other, like a chain. The third concept is balance. When several objects are balanced at different angles, one above each other, they have a common center of gravity. The same goes for drawing. There must be a sense of security and balance between the opposite forces regardless of where the center will be and regardless of the pose this figure will have. They will always have a center of gravity. This common center of gravity starts from the pit of the neck passing vertically all the way down to the ground either into one supporting foot or feet or in between the feet when they are both supporting the weight equally as you can see in these examples. The only way the center will feel out of balance is in action or motion of the figure in between poses. Like for example in running. The act of running is simply throwing yourself forward and catching yourself before you fall. And as you can see here from the running sequence, the center is balanced while you start and at the end of the motion. But in the middle your body is unbalanced due to the center being away from the only one supporting foot touching the ground. So as you can see the foot is uh, a bit further away from the center of gravity so you're about to fall but it will regain balance once again when the other foot touches down and the center of balance will be in between them balancing the figure all over again the next concept is rhythm according to Bridgman in drawing and painting there is always rhythm in the outline the colors the light and the shade to express this balance in figure drawing we have to balance the passive or inactive side to the more forceful or active side in the body while keeping the subtle flow of symmetry throughout the body. As you can see in these examples, the active side rhythm is balanced on the other passive side. Where it stretched out in the active side, it wedged in in the passive side. Where it goes up in the active side, it goes down in the passive side and so on. 
and where it goes out on the active side, it goes in in the passive side, creating this beautiful sense of rhythm. By the way, you can see where Frank Riley got this idea of rhythm lines, since he was a student of uh, George Bridgman. Now the fifth concept is turning and twisting. As we said earlier, the three main masses of the body balance each other, and they tilt and twist but they are still held together by the spinal column so as they twist and turn the spaces between them become either long or short or spiral you can think of it as an accordion when it's played you will have one active inflated side and one compressed passive side this is due to the three big muscles being like levers pulling all the adjacent muscles with them and since the muscles are interlocking they will pull the rest of the smaller muscles along with the movement this muscle movement is like two men using a cross cut saw, cutting a tree. The pulling muscles is inflated, while the pulled muscle is flabby and deflated. So for example, when the ribcage and the pelvis are pulled close together from one side, they force the muscles on the active side to stretch, and the passive side muscles will deflate and compress, creating the sense of motion, harmony, and rhythm. Next concept is the anatomy. Anatomy is a prerequisite for this muscle. There is no other way. Bridgman rely heavily on understanding the bone and muscle structure to understand the interlocking that is going on between the muscles. His idea of anatomy is to, before you even put one line on paper, the actual construction of the body and the body part must come first as a mental construction, which will precede the physical line on paper. So the whole mass of the body part you are drawing must come first in your imagination then the lines will describe it as you draw it but it has to be in your mind first so always think in masses masses that move together or against each other that are always wedging, passing and interlocking also a noticeable feature of the Bridgman anatomy is the use of law of architecture he uses the architecture example a lot for example he simplified the head as a dome the feet as arches and the legs as pillars also, he used the law of mechanics in his anatomy books, as he simplified the elbow as hinges and the limbs as levers. Many of Bridgman's illustrations of anatomy simplify the body part into its basic mechanical function, starting with the basic box shape, then the function, then finally detailing it. Next concept is the distribution of the masses. How the masses of the body interlock each other and in what shape or form. In order to simplify the shapes of the body and make it easier for us to understand and memorize the shape of the masses instead of every single muscle and bone, Bridgman simplified the complex forms into major 7 or 8 forms that is composed out of these muscles and bones, making it into a simple formula. Now starting with the front view, from the bottom, the ankles are a square shape, the legs are triangular, the knees are square shape, the thighs are round. The hip is a square mass. The hip locked with the ribcage in a triangular shaped wedge. The ribcage itself is an oval and the top of the ribcage with the shoulders create a square. Finally, the neck is a cylinder and the head of course is a square box. From the back side, from the top, the head is a box, the neck is round, the shoulders are square, the ribcage is round, the hips are square, the thighs are round, the knees are square, and the calves are triangular and finally the ankles are square. This will make it much easier to remember the shapes of the body without going deep into the anatomy. Finally, the last concept is light, shade and the planes of the body. This is another evidence of uh, Bridgman borrowing the laws of architecture. Here he uses the architecture molding due to its alternate rounds and hollow of planes and curved surfaces. In this method, the human figure is composed of big and simple masses, like we said, the three big masses and the smaller masses that follows. These masses will look like molding in architecture. For example, looking at the back view of the figure, there is a concave mass from the head to the neck and then outward plane to the shoulder. A double curve from the rib cage to the pelvis ending abruptly where the thighs begins, and so on. A series of underlying and varied form of convex and concave curves and straight planes make up the entirety of the body. When these planes are hit with the light, 
they will distribute the light and shade all around the figure in a distinguished way, just like the molding in architecture. Think of it like shading a box. If the light hit the box from the top, that plane will be highlighted, while the other plane will get less light compared to the first top face. Every plane that is hit directly by light will have a bright shine or highlight, while the other planes moving away from the light will get less and less till they become entirely in the shadows. As you can see in this example, the similarity between the architecture molding and the human figure. The pros and cons of the Bridgman method. The pros, correct and accurate structure based on correct anatomical references. Dynamic and active gesture and poses. Great method for classical artists and classical paintings as in religious or in the renaissance style painting. The concepts of this method can be used not only for drawing the figure but to draw everything else. As for the cons, this method is not for beginners. Sadly, it needs a lot of prerequisites and experience to master it. It's hard to use this method for concept art and drawing from imagination. It requires an immense knowledge of anatomy. And finally, it needs a lot of practice and rereading Bridgman books over and over till you understand the meaning behind his words. Also, the male and female figures may look a bit rigid using this method, but you can smooth it later, of course, like I'm gonna show you in the later section. Now, let's try to explain this method by drawing the figure while keeping in mind all these eight concepts. Now we are not gonna draw a mannequin like we did with Loomis, but we're gonna think about these eight concepts as the steps we have to consider before drawing the figure. I start off by drawing the big three masses of the body in a box form, the head, the ribcage, and the pelvis. Now before I draw the pelvis and the ribcage, I draw the rhythm lines of the body, capturing the movement that this body is doing even before drawing the big masses. Now we can draw the big masses then add the rhythm or the other way. Now as Bridgman said, you need the concept of the figure done in your mind before you have to draw one single line. So keep in mind the thing you want to draw, think about it, think about the motion, the movement of the body, then start drawing. Now let's draw the rest of the masses. Of course the ribcage is round but for the sake of simplicity let's make them all boxes. As you can see the pelvis is a bit turning and twisting around to the right. Now I add the balance by drawing the common center of gravity from the pit of the neck straight to the ground, allowing me to know where the feet should be. It will help you correct your mistakes of placing the feet. Remember, a balanced figure is either on one, one foot, two feet, or in between them. After that, I start locking the body parts of the main masses, relying here on the concept of anatomy and the concept of wedging and passing of the muscles into each other. Also keeping in mind the distribution of masses by remembering the shape of the smaller masses and what shape they lock into each other. Finally, I add the final layer of details on top, keeping in mind the concept of molding, like we discussed in the last concept, and how the planes of the body work with light and shade. I promise you, this will not work from the first trial. This needs a lot of practice to master. But once you do master it, not only your figure drawing will get better, but your drawing in general will develop to a higher level.
Now, if this first one wasn't clear enough, let's try again with two examples on real models. So you can see the model that I'm drawing. Okay, starting with the male body, I draw the three masses first. Then I add the rhythm lines to show the movement of the body. Add the balance line by adding the center of the gravity from the pit of the neck to the ground which will correct the pose stand right away, as you can see. Next, I add the wedging, passing and locking smaller masses to the body. Again, anatomy here is essential to know what you're drawing and where you draw it. Finally, the detail layer at the end is drawn while looking closely at the model. You don't need your drawing to be identical each time. You need to vary it by drawing the changes that make this body unique than other bodies. Finally, we add the light and shade by observing the body planes. Now, pay close attention to the female body. Bridgman method is blocky and rigid, but when he draw the females, even with blocky boxes, they end up looking dynamic and smooth. It's all in the way he softened the edges afterward. Remember, there is no hard edge in a female body. We start the same way, big three muscles, rhythm lines, balance, wedging, passing and locking, anatomy, light and shade. Keep remembering those eight concepts. When you do your interlocking shape in the female body by the way, they don't interlock as harshly as they do in the male body. So keep things smooth and soft. Finally, the final layer of details while observing the model and adding the light and shade.
and its sum. Next, let's expand more about the major concept behind the Bridgman method, the wedging, passing, and interlocking concept. On this example, we can see how the deltoid is passing over the triceps while the triceps is passing under it, interlocking them together and creating a wedge in the intersection. As for the shape, notice the shape of the shoulders are box-like and the upper arm is round. The elbow is square, followed by the round lower arm and finally the boxy wrist. Same here with this example, with the pecs and the deltoid passing over the biceps while the biceps is passing under, creating this interlocking and a little wedge in the intersection. Also notice the distribution of the masses, boxy shoulders, round rib cage, round upper arm, boxy elbow between the round upper arm and the round lower arm, and finally the boxy wrist. Final example, same passing with the different muscles creating wedges and interlocking between the smaller masses. Also notice the shape of the masses around the arm. This is where Bridgman made his method based on. It's heavily influenced by anatomy since he taught anatomy for artists in the, uh, at the Art Student League of New York for over 45 years. So it's 45 years of anatomy. That's what uh, he based his method on. Next, let's draw 3 minute quick pauses like we did with Loomis but now using the Bridgman method. Now this gonna sound really weird, but Bridgman method for drawing quick pauses is completely different than what we talked about. When he draw quick pauses, he uses the contour line of the body to quickly describe the figure, not the eight concept we talked about. So this is how he do it. He start with the head in straight lines as a box, then he draws the neck as a line, then he draws the pit of the neck and then add the collarbone's direction, the direction of the shoulders, from one side to the other, making sure that the pit of the neck is in the center of that line. Next, he indicates the general direction of the body by outlining the rib cage and pelvis from the passive side, the compressed side. Then he adds the active side of the body with one line. Next, back to the other side, he draws the thigh line and the knee and the leg line, placing finally the foot under it, adding the balance to the figure. Notice that the foot is directly under the pit of the neck. After that he draw the line between the two legs, marking the knee on the other leg. Then he draw the other side of the leg. Then he indicates the chest line and the center line of the body. He adds the rib cage, the pelvis, inner lines. And finally he adds the arms at the end of the drawing. So if you want the three steps of his first figure drawing, you can remember it like this. First he starts with the head and the torso, then he adds the legs and finally the arm. Again, you might find this difficult to follow at first, but after practicing the long method first, you will realize that you are getting better and better at the fast figure drawing method. So think of this as a shortcut to the longer method. Remember when you're doing this fast method for the females, try to make your line a bit smoother and less rigid. The more you practice this method, the more you're gonna see how it works wonders with the quick poses. It's mainly a shortcut to the 8 concept, but with the contour line. Now let's see how I draw the 20 minute poses after practicing this method for a long time. I start off with the same way, but a bit faster. Drawing the three masses in the box form, then the rhythm lines, center of gravity to check the feet position, and then adding the interlocking of the smaller masses based on anatomy. Notice that the body is turning and twisting. 
due to the ribcage rotation on one side and opposite to the hip at the same side. Always remember the active and passive sides of the body. You can see here the muscles are a bit rigid, which is fine when you're drawing a male, but make sure it's much smoother as we said when you're drawing the female. Finally, the final layer of details and adding light and shade to the planes of the body. As for the female, we do the same things but considering more dynamic rhythm lines and smoother and interlocking muscles. With the one hour pause, uh, the process is still the same, just try to take things much slower. You have plenty of time to think things through. Here of course you will see the sped up process, but for you, take it slow. This happened in one hour. Pay close attention to the model and draw your interlocking shapes more carefully. As for the shading, Bridgman goes a bit more darker on the shadow areas. But his hatch line are not straight like Loomis. His hatch line go around with the body parts, go around with the planes of the body. 
So they aren't straight lines, but round lines that move along and around the masses underneath. For the final painting we use the same concepts and same style but for couples instead of one person. The more you do this the easier and easier it will get and you will find yourself repeating the same concept almost subconsciously while drawing the figure. Once you reach this level you will develop your figure drawing techniques to a whole higher level. And here is the final sheet 
very complicated and very enjoyable journey this was. George Bridgman's unique style and method may be daunting at first and may not be for uh, absolute beginners, but once you understand the concepts behind his method, it becomes enjoyable and accurate method to draw the figure. Hopefully I managed to unlock the secrets behind his method and present it in a simplified way that is both systematically detailed and an easy to follow step by step guide. Before I go I would like to thank all the people who donated to my Patreon. Thank you so much for your generosity. If you would like to support me at Patreon, please go to Patreon slash Rainwalker. Thank you so much for all your help. Coming up next, the method that I consider the hardest method of them all. Well at least for me. The stylized technique of Bernie Hogarth. I can already feel the pressure of trying to make it simple, but we will see how that goes later. For now, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.